Jeff Antoniak here. Welcome to Guided Listening today. So today we're going to talk about one of my very favorite saxophone players, Joe Lovano. I don't know how many Guided Listenings we've done by now, and I don't know that we've ever gotten to any Joe, so this is, uh, this is long overdue. One of my favorite recordings of his is a double CD called Live at the Village Vanguard. I want to say it's from 1996 or something like that. We're going to listen to one of the, one of the songs off that album, Lonnie's Lament, John Coltrane tune. So before we get into that, um, we have the Summer Summit coming up in July. It's, it's uh, what is it? It's June uh, 2023 right now. And uh, the last uh, second half of July, we always do a virtual session, an in-person session. We've got a handful of spots left. So if you can make your way to Washington, D.C., please register, grab one of those last spots. We're already booked up for uh, piano. Maybe we have one guitar spot left. It's, we're down to a handful. We have one spot left for the virtual session. People attend that from all over the world. So I know you are all over the world. So um, grab that last spot. Go to uh, jazzwiresummit.com, and uh, I'd love to work together with you. Now, I know we have a good time with these guided listening sessions, but um, to really work together, you know, great that you get some information from me. I'm sure there's other YouTube channels you watch, and you get information from there, but getting information is not really the same as learning, and it's certainly not the same as being coached or having a mentor or any of that. So if you really want to get moving, and I know a lot of us are, have sort of been sitting here and we're on the periphery and sort of looking in and not, you know, not quite sure, I really encourage you, if not the Summer Summit, to get going in Jazzwire. Some of the Joe Lovano stuff we're going to be listening to, we're going to be talking about inside Jazzwire, some of his melodic licks and ideas and where it's coming from harmonically and all that. So I hope I see you there. Okay, so this song, Lonnie's Lament, uh, the band, um, it's a two CD set and it's different bands on different CDs. So this is the CD that has Christian McBride on bass, Lewis Nash on drums, Mulgrew Miller on piano. Holy crap, right? If you know those names, you're thinking, holy crap, like this is a band and Lovano, and this is swinging. Now, uh, Lonnie's Lament on the original Coltrane version is a lament and it's very slow and uh, and this is up you know up tempo swinging and it's always swinging it doesn't get you know out you know in any sort of way like that like feel time wise it's just marching ahead and so it's a little bit up tempo the song ends up being simple a a b a simple form and it's pretty simple in that the a sections are all really very much c minor. Um, the chords are sort of moving up from C minor to D minor to E flat uh, major and sort of back down, but it's all just think C minor for the A sections. The bridge quickly moves to the relative major, but it, it's a very simple tune. So what we get to hear is, you know, almost modal playing, I think we could say, and these master musicians stretching out on it. So, um, you know, I think let's just jump in and, uh, and listen, you know, but... Joe Lovano is just one of my favorites. He has such a personal sound. And if you've ever heard Joe talk, whether it's live, sitting, sitting at a restaurant, bar with him, whatever, cornering him after a gig, he's going to talk about sound and vibration. And that's what the universe is about. And that's what brings people together. And that's what makes you an artist is your sound not even the notes you play, which of course is part of it. That's part of sound, but sound is so integral and important to him. And he has this amazing sound and his concept sort of a pitch. He has this great core to his sound, but it's also, he toys with intonation and, and bending and, and it, there's just so much going on with his, uh, playing that's very intriguing. So, you know, just the notes and chords and all that sort of stuff aside, there's just so much that he's doing with the instrument beyond, you know, playing fast, playing cool stuff. So let's jump into it. Here we go. Joe Lovano, Lonnie's Lament. <laughs> So this is our melody. And just listen to how that's swinging. Lewis Nash, Christian McBride. Woo! Man. Here's the bridge. And the melody works nice sped up this fast. So we're coming to the end of the melody. 
That's been our 32 measures. And, ah, so melody again. Interesting. That's a fill. Back to the melody. So he's playing the melody a second time. Interesting. Feels like it wants, you know, he's taking more time with it. I love it. Still the melody. This is our bridge. Some false fingering stuff that he does to sort of shade that note. All right. Here's the end of our second chorus. All right. He's solo. Some of that, you know, kind of bending and stretching the tone that Joe does so well. And I love his use of syncopation, his use of a bunch of offbeats. I think that's something I unconsciously stole from him, maybe. But the way there's a lightness and he's like a, a boxer, kind of bobbing and weaving through the time. This line. Yeah, I transcribed that one. We're going to be talking about that in Jazzwire. And listen to the accompaniment behind him. He's being so busy all this double time. And the bass and the drums, there are fills in the drums for sure. But man, it is meat and potatoes, cymbal and bass. Cymbal and bass. Man, this is marching along. Maybe let's focus in on uh, Mulgrew on piano. So we're hearing, you know, McCoy Tyner language if I had to generalize, but, you know, Mulgrew, one of the greats, uh, I don't want to say unsung heroes, but one of the absolute greats of, you know, the more modern era of jazz, and he died way too young. How he pushes Joe ahead with tension in his voicings, but also with his rhythmic sense of how to push Joe along. Woo! And so that was a great moment where there's tension in the piano. I think there was, you know, sort of a pedal moment where there was between the bass, the drum fill, Joe's way up high in altissimo, building like this. Those moments where all that energy is coming from everywhere. And Lewis Nash doing these, like being very clear about the form. They're sort of playing this big washy modal thing. But man, and, and right there it was uh, Mulgrew that highlighted the form. Dotted quarters. They're so killing the form. Did you check out when I talked about Passion Dance? Uh, maybe a month ago, McCoy Tyner and Joe Henderson, how it's, this, this is very much coming from that, I would say. And I guarantee these four gentlemen know that album like the back of their hand. So this is sort of spiritually coming from Passion Dance, I'm gonna say. Oh, and Joe is quoting the melody here at the end of his solo. Cool way to get out of it. Transition. Yes, give it up for Joe. Mulgrew Miller. Listen to the bass line. I know we're supposed to be listening to the piano song. Interesting stuff Christian McBride's doing, playing way up high, jumping down low, up high, jumping down low. He's doing his job, but he finds an, a way to keep it interesting in its own right. All C minor, more or less. It's a great outside playing, but so melodic. Right? I mean, it's crunching against the chords, but man, the lines uh, make so much sense. They have so much direction. And that's what allows us to hear outside playing as not wrong. Uh, the direction that these guys give the outside playing. And 
and the lightness, the way he's kind of bouncing over the time, that reminds me of uh, McCoy Tyner's feel. little kicks in the drums, but not overshadowing. It's just how much Lewis Nash and Christian McBride know that their job is to just swing like hell. Everything else is a distant 530 second. Swing like hell first, everything else later. And now we're hearing a little more interaction from Lewis Nash, right, as, it, as we're building, but it's still swinging. I need to transcribe that. That is killing. And that was a cool moment where he played over the bar line into the bridge. None of the band highlighted the bridge there, which they almost always do. That was a cool moment of sort of mystery there. And now, building into this chord kind of playing, right? And that's a very standard McCoyism, but I mean, that goes back to George Shearing and so many piano players. It's a great way to build energy is go from single line to six, eight, 10 note voicing, smart. And again, this is so dancing, so bouncing as it's heavy and dark and moody, so light. Joe comes in, he's playing a second solo. It's my band, I'm playing two solos. Cool rhythmic displacement there from Joe, plays an idea, then moves it around on the beat. Awesome. playing sort of over the time are these flurries of notes, of course. It's coming from Coltrane. That polyrhythm behind the band and how it builds to that great release, amazing. syncopation that Joe likes. And this is the melody of the bridge. I don't, I don't remember if he played the A section. I don't think he did. That's the melody. So this is the end of the melody. That was pretty slick. So now we have the melody again. So his second last chorus, he started out soloing and sort of morphed into the melody, and now he's giving us the whole melody again. So there wasn't this sharp division between I'm ending my solo, and now here's this new thing. Hey. And again, so swing it, right? Even at this point. the end of the song. Melody again. Wow, okay, we're getting the melody like two and a half times out. But Joe is still, it, it's sort of a loose melody and he's still improvising around it, but it's still clearly the melody, if you know the melody. dotted quarters to help build rhythm across the bar line. Real standard thing a lot of bands and players do, and it works every time. Tag ending. We're out of time. Rolling piano chords, fills around the drums. So the whole band is contributing. It's not just a cadenza for Joe.
That cool vibrato, like it's sort of an old fashioned vibrato that Joe's using there. Amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just at the very end, hearing that vibrato, and, uh, you know, Joe is a huge student of, uh, of the music. And, he, you know, he, he's gone back as far or further than, you know, anybody as far as studying, you know, like for real big boy studying Lester Young and Ben Webster and Coleman Hawkins and, and you know, all many, many names around those that, that, you know, maybe I don't even know, you know, him coming from Cleveland and just all the great regional players there, there were that influenced him, such as his father. So, yeah, I, he, he just has this great swing post-swing bebop. He's just got all that in his playing. So when you hear him play, you're hearing Coltrane and you're hearing avant-garde and you're hearing Coleman Hawkins. It's stunning. It's great. So that's, you know, that's why Joe is uh, deservedly, you know, one of the great players of his generation and, you know, honestly, the last 50 years or so. So anyway, that that's a good one. And man, that is so swinging. And, and that's a lesson... Um, it's one thing to sort of play modal and with energy. And so often the swing just gets left by the wayside and we're sort of emoting and we're using all of our technique and we're playing all the cool stuff we know. And the feel is just like, no one's even thinking about it sometimes. And that's, that's easy to do. And you know, uh, ugh, it doesn't feel good, right? And then swing it to just swing like Papa Joe Jones swing. Like, man, does that feel good. And then to do those two things together, to, to have all that energy and emoting and, you know, kind of all that as it's swinging like ridiculous. Um, that's just, you know, to, to me, super high level. And that's what I strive for. Those are the players that I love to play with is people that can sort of walk that tightrope of energy and risk and all of that. But man, it has to be swinging. So uh, that's, you know, that's the lesson, I think, of, uh, of that track. If you don't know it, that, that album, Live at the Village Vanguard, 1996-ish, uh, get it. The, the second CD is very interesting because it's Joe Lovano with Billy Hart on drums, Anthony Cox on bass, and Tom Harrell. So it's two horns, bass drums, no, harmo no harmony instrument. So it's a much different band. It's a different setting. So it's, it's about, uh, you know, sort of melody over that bass drum. So whether it's, whether we want to say it's sort of coming from Ornette Coleman, you know, there's aspects of that. It's just very, very hip. Tom Harrell, you know, one of the great melodic players of all time, we hear him really stretching on that. So, um, the two, the two albums are very, uh, two CDs are, are very different from each other. By the way, do you know what a CD is? I'm kind of dating myself there. It's like an eight track, but a little better. <laughs> Okay, so I hope I'm going to get to work with you in Jazzwire. Here's the thing. Um, we have people who have been watching me on YouTube for four years. Somebody actually just this week who's been watching for four years joined Jazzwire. Take some people four years and I'm so happy to have you. So that's happened a couple hundred times of, you know, people who have sort of checked me out and at some point a switch gets flipped or some money gets freed up or some time. Like I get there's a lot of reasons, right? But uh, the people that come into Jazzwire, they tend to stay because it's an awesome community. It's not the Jeff show there. It's a community of coming together and learning this music together uh, with some amazing guidance. So uh, I hope I see inside Jazzwire, especially some of you who have been checking me out for three or four years. That's the way to do it. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Check out some Joe Lovano. See you next time.